Hi, I'm Bill Newcott, and I'm here at Wolf Trap, the National Park for the Performing Arts, out here just outside Washington, D.C. And I'm here today to talk to Emile Decou, who's the conductor of the National Symphony Orchestra. And this summer, he's conducting a few performances of live orchestral accompaniment to classic motion pictures. Specifically this year, he's doing Fantasia, Walt Disney's great 1939 classic film of mixing music with cinema, and 2001, A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick's film, which really redefined what music and film could do together when it was made back in the 1960s. When you were born, did your parents say, we're going to give this kid a conductor name? No. Actually, it's my dad's name and my grandfather's name. Yeah. But this, it's originally spelled the French way with the E at the end. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted a normal name in 1960. My brother's Ken is like, why did I get this weird name? But anyway, <laughs> I got Emil, so it sounds like a conductor name. Maybe it is. that's why it's I perfect. wanted to conduct. That's perfect. Yep. Um, it seems to me <clears throat> conducting a movie with a live orchestra is like juggling chainsaws. You, 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 do you have to divide Pretty your much. attention? Pretty much. Because I'm looking at, well, the orchestra, of course, I'm looking at the screen that has the film on it. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking at another screen that has a digital readout and my music, of course. Mm -hmm. And so you're constantly going through all these different sources, and the orchestra is only seeing me. And yeah. they can't see the film, they can't hear the film, of course. They're just playing the music. And so it has to be done like a concert, but it has to be in sync within a half a second, yeah. which is very hard when you're coordinating you know, 80 people on stage. I've been here at Wolf Drive, I've seen Casablanca, and I've seen The Wizard of Oz. Wonderful. Um, amazing. And the thing is, the, both of those movies, while music is important to them, the two films you're doing this summer, Fantasia and 2001, the music is almost a character in both of those films. Very much. And very much. Casablanca is, um, it, it's also like a character in the film. When you have the different characters, uh, the Marseillaise or the German National Anthem or the love theme. Uh, with Fantasia, it is even more so because it's the images were inspired by the music itself. Mm -hmm. So music came first with Stokowski and Disney collaborating, and it's it's the focus. It's not background music. Yeah, Stokowski famously took liberties with the music in yes. Fantasia. Um, with everything, and, I think. Uh, well, yes, in life and everything, his hair. <laughs> um, but I wonder, uh, as as a, as a conductor who's not who doesn't have that. You know, he had that creative process that he put into making the film. Right. You're approaching it 60 years later, 70 years later. Does it make you feel uncomfortable, or do, are you happy? Do, do you stick really close to his orchestrations? Do they exist? Yes, they do exist. Yeah. We're, we're performing it with, with the reorchestrations and the cuts, even, that he, he put into music. And, and the funny thing with Fantasia is it was a film I first saw when I was a young man in Orange County uh, during a release, because there weren't DVDs of, of films back then. And it was, a, it was a film that made me want to be a, a classical musician. And so coming many, many years later, uh, now that I am so fortunate to work in this profession, to be able to conduct this film mm -hmm. with Stokowski, who is my absolute idol. Really? I just idolize Stokowski. He's my musical god and always has been. Uh, is, is thrilling, but also very humbling. I mean, because you look at that amazing image on the screen. Mm -hmm. He's one of the greats of 20th century music. Do you leave the kettle drum in when the, when the ostrich falls? Yeah, I, yes, absolutely. Because that was the main complaint when they re-recorded re <laughs> it. And they took it out? The, uh, uh, the digital recording that they did, remember in the early 80s, oh, when they yes, re re released yes. it. And, and we were all waiting for it. And yeah. Where's the kettle drum? You have wow. to, but he put a lot of, a lot of different reorchestrations in it. Yeah. It'll be nice also to conduct Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is one of my favorite pieces. The last time we did that here was with the concert with Renee Fleming. And as soon as we got to the very end, I had the orchestra stand, and there was a, a huge... Uh, thunderstorm and a blackout. Talk a little bit about 2001, mm -hmm. which is a difficult score. I mean, he, this Kubrick didn't fool around. He picked some really evocative music. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about how you feel about that the score of that film and conducting it. Oh, well, it's it's very challenging. Uh, Atmospheres, which is a piece that people might not know off the top of their head, but the piece was a, a very new piece. And so even now, it's it's the part of the film at the end where he's going through the monolith and these crazy colors, and it sounds like a kaleidoscope of, of just modern electronic sounds. But it's all produced by acoustic instruments on stage, and it'll actually in my 14 years of conducting here, at Wolf Trap, it's, it'll be the single largest orchestra you've ever had on that stage. Uh, 
it's uh, it calls for huge wind forces, percussion, two keyboards, where they actually at the end of the piece play inside of the of the piano with mallets. Uh, but it's it's amazing, startling, beautiful piece of of, yeah. of a marriage of film of images, abstract images, and uh, and music. And it's it's one of those moments when you look at it, it just becomes. It transcends being a film, which is so brilliant about about the collaboration with, with Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke. And then the, the funny thing with that is he, he released the film, and he didn't ask permission to use the music <laughs> from Ligeti, and he didn't like it very much. But then they made amends, and he used it, he used some of his music in, in a subsequent film. Emil, thank you so much. Thank you so and much. And thanks for doing this work because it, it, it brings people to the to the, to the symphony who might not be there, and they can appreciate the music, and they appreciate the film that more yeah. when they yeah. see the film later. So Absolutely. thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Do your name right, Emil or Emil? Emil, Emil. The the first way, I think. Emil. Yeah, like like you're <laughs> eating a meal. A meal. Okay, that's good. Yeah.